Hi, everyone, and welcome to the September 2022 um, Austin ISD Health Advocates webinar. My name is Lee Ennis, and I am here joined by Christina Shepard and Joy Campbell, and we are going to present to you some pretty hot topics today, just as we're getting the school year started, um, and, and, and as we're getting into the swing of things, you know, um, work or personally related, we know some things can you know, get a little tough sometimes stress-wise when it comes to things like benefits, everyday life, um, you know, our health in general. So that's what the three of us are here for. We want to, you know, be able to share with you all of the resources that you have as an AISD uh, employee or dependent. So today we're going to get started in talking about some of those things, and we really hope that you guys enjoy it. So I'm going to hand the reins over to Christina, and we're going to get started. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Lee. All right, today I want to share some information about the HSA account with everybody. Uh, going into open enrollment next month, Austin ISD is going to offer two different HSA compatible health plans. So I thought it would be a good time to get a refresher on the benefits of opening that HSA account. Share my screen. Perfect. That five key wasn't working. All right, wonderful. So here is your HSA how to. So some of you may be asking what exactly is an HSA? We hear it talked about quite a bit, but not a lot of people really understand what it is or how it works. So it stands simply for health savings account. It is an account that you have money in that you can use for qualified medical, dental, vision, prescription expenses. The IRS regulates which list of expenses are considered eligible, but you can use those that money for those things. And then HSA Bank is the exclusive HSA account provider for Austin ISD. And we joined up with them last year and they'll continue to be our HSA provider going into 2023. Um, not everyone is eligible to open an HSA. You have to meet certain qualifications to be able to do that. So first of all, you have to be enrolled in one of those high deductible health plans or an HDHP. And so with an HDHP, the minimum deductible has to be at least $1,500. The IRS regulates that amount, and that can change from year to year per IRS regulations. Um, you also cannot be covered under a secondary health insurance through a spouse or also have Medicare Part A or B. You would not be eligible to contribute to the HSA account if you had either of those things. Um, with an HDHP, it is structured a little bit differently. So with one of these types of plans, you're actually responsible for all of your medical costs until your deductible has been met, with the exception of those covered wellness services. So if you needed to go to the doctor because you thought you had a sinus infection, but you hadn't met your deductible yet, you would be paying that full office visit charge, less the in-network you know, discount. Um, if you were going to your doctor for your annual checkup, however, and they were in network and it was a covered service, then that would be covered 100%, even though you hadn't yet met your deductible. Once your deductible is met, then you're going to have a percentage that you pay and then a percentage that the health insurance is going to pay. And this is called co-insurance because you guys are both working together to pay those medical bills. So how does it work exactly? You have two parts to this. So we have our HSA qualified health insurance coverage, and then we have our HSA account, which is really just a bank account. So first of all, you have to add money to the account. You can't spend money unless there's money in there. So money is deposited directly into the account from your paycheck. Um, you can also contribute to your uh, HSA bank account via a bank transfer or a check. So if you had a previous HSA with another employer, you can actually transfer those funds into your HSA bank account and have them all in one place. Um, you use that money for those eligible expenses we kind of talked about earlier. So medical expenses, things like your visit fees, lab fees, co-insurance payments, and for, for pre prescriptions, um, vision expenses, so again, your, your visit charges or co-pays, 
glasses or contacts. Contact lens solution is another interesting thing you can use that money for. Dental expenses, your office visit charges, orthodontic charges, or other medically necessary services. Um, one thing that's important to note is that cosmetic services are generally not a qualified expense under an HSA. So things like you know teeth whitening or veneers, unless those are medically necessary, you wouldn't be able to use the HSA for those items. And then there's a lot of other expenses that you might not think about that are actually HSA eligible. So certain over-the-counter medications, sunscreen, first aid kits, period products, um, and different types of appliances, maybe you need an orthotic. And then there's things like massage therapy that if you have a letter of medical necessity, in that case, they could be HSA eligible. Um, to see the full list, you want to visit the IRS website as they maintain that full list of specific qualified expenses. And then you have easy ways to pay for those expenses. So with HSA Bank, you're going to get a debit card. Once you've enrolled for the first time, you should get that debit card within about two weeks. Um, it is a smart card, so it is designed to only work at locations that provide HSA qualified services or goods. So if you try to use your HSA bank account at Applebee's, it's probably not going to be approved. However, if you use it at Walmart, because Walmart has a pharmacy and plenty of those HSA qualified things, then it will likely be approved. Um, you can also do online bill pay. So you can send a check directly to the provider from your online HSA bank account, and you can reimburse yourself. Um, maybe you had a bigger medical expense than what you had saved up in your HSA balance, or you just didn't have your HSA bank card on you and you paid out of pocket. You can actually reimburse yourself for those costs through your account online. Uh, they also have personal checks and you can do ATM cash withdrawals as well, but there is an additional service fee assigned to those items. And then for any of your purchases, you wanna make sure that you are saving your receipts for your own personal tax records. HSA Bank does not require that you upload a receipt. They do have it available online, so you can store your receipts there, keep them all nice and convenient, but really it's, it's up to you to save those receipts for your personal tax records should the IRS ever want to double check that you are using the account appropriately. So a lot of people ask, well, what is the benefit? I'm taking this higher deductible plan. I have to pay more out of pocket. I'm saving money, but what, what's the real benefit to having an HSA health plan? So one of the first benefits is that these higher deductible health plans generally will have a lower plan premium, the amount of money that you have to pay each month to have that insurance coverage. Uh, with the AISB plans, the HSA Seton plan also has the lowest out-of-pocket maximum of any of the plans that the district offers. Um, any money that you deposit in the HSA account is pre-taxed. So that is money that you did not have to pay federal income tax on, and it continues to grow. Uh, unlike the other type of savings account, which is an FSA, a flexible spending account, um, there's no use it or lose it with your HSA. So that's a good way to remember it. Flexible spending, you have to spend it. Health savings, you get to save it. Um, so your money would continue to roll over from year to year if you don't spend all of the funds. Uh, you own the HSA. So the money in the HSA does belong to you. Should you ever retire or leave the district, you get to keep those funds. You can transfer them into a new HSA account. If you're retiring, some people actually use their HSAs for a retirement fund which that's our next item. So you can invest those HSA funds and use them for retirement. Uh, it's pre-tax money. Once you turn age 65, you have access to those funds for any expense that you like without penalty. If you're using it for a non-medical expense, you do need to claim it as income. Um, however, if you're continuing to use it for medical expenses, then you, know, you can just go ahead and use it and there's no tax on it. Um, when we're looking at the annual cost of our health care coverage, the HSA plans generally tend to save you money year over year. And that's what I always encourage people to look at. Um, when we're looking at it month to month at a smaller premium for maybe that seat and only plan, it doesn't seem like that much of a cost saving. But once we times it out over 12 months, you can actually see a pretty significant cost savings on that HSA plan. So with the HSA Seton, no premium to employees for employee only coverage. So it doesn't cost you anything. Again, that HSA Seton plan does have the 
have the lowest out-of-pocket maximum of any of the plans that AISD offers, meaning that is the most money you would have to pay out-of-pocket for medical expenses in a given plan year. So your worst case scenario, the most you're out is $4,500 for the year after that, and then have to pay the rest of the costs for the remainder of that plan year for those covered services. Um, you would also get a $1,500 contribution from AISD over the course of 12 months. If you're on that HSA Seton plan employee only coverage, we deposit $125 each month into that HSA account on your behalf, and you can contribute additional funds if you'd like. So the max amount that you would really be out of pocket annually on the HSA Seton is $3,000. When we're looking at the Seton only, this is based off of salary band two. You have a $55 a month premium times 12 months would be $660. Your out-of-pocket maximum on that plan, even though you have co-pays, um, you could still pay up to $6,000 out-of-pocket in that worst-case scenario situation. Uh, so subtotal is the $6,660. There is no AISD savings account contribution affiliated with that plan. So you can see there that you may actually pay out-of-pocket twice as much by going with a seating only plan. Um, growing your savings. So if you wanted to invest your funds, HSA Bank allows you to invest any balance once your account has reached a minimum of $1,000. So you have to keep at least $1,000 in that bank account, but anything in excess of that, you can invest in one of two different portfolio options. So TD Ameritrade, that one allows you to be in control and you can pick and choose which funds you want to invest in. If you're someone who doesn't really get into finance, doesn't know what to do, then they have Devonier, which is a guided portfolio option. You kind of just answer a couple quick questions and they take care of the rest. And then there's all of the advantages. So again, it's another way to save for retirement in addition to your TRS, your social security, a 403B or a 457B, all of which are offered by the district. Um, it allows you to build those long-term savings. Again, that money that's going into the HSA is yours, whether it came from us or whether it came from you, and you can move those funds as needed. So if you did have a bigger expense and some funds were tied up in investments and you needed to move those back into your HSA to pay medical bills, you can absolutely do that. And then last but not least, just some important things to consider. Uh, there are annual maximums as to how much money you can contribute to an HSA. So for individuals this year, the maximum is going to be $3,650. Next year, that's going to go up by $200 to $3,850. For families, we're looking at $7,300 for 2022, and that goes up pretty significantly next year as well to $7,750. And for those of you that are age 55 or older, you are actually eligible to add an additional $1,000 catch-up contribution into the HSA. If you have both an HSA and an FSA, you can, it's allowed. However, the FSA becomes what's called limited. So you can only use flexible spending account money that year for dental and vision expenses only. That's something to keep in mind as you're going through open enrollments. You can change your HSA contribution at any time. So as most of us know, benefit changes you can't make willy-nilly throughout the year unless you have a qualifying life event. Uh, with your HSA contribution, this is the exception to that rule. So you can adjust the amount that you're contributing throughout the year in your benefit portal. And there are special rules for employees who are eligible for Medicare. Um, once you turn age 65, if you're enrolled in Medicare, obviously you can't receive those HSA contributions or make them uh, without having a tax penalty. If anybody's deferred Medicare enrollment, there's actually a six month look back period. So if you're deferring, you want to make sure you stop contributing to your HSA at least six months before your Medicare is effective. And for any questions with that, be sure to con consult with a tax or a financial advisor. Um, to view your account or for more information, you can simply go to www.hsabank.com or you can give them a call. They are available. They're happy to answer your questions and they've been a wonderful vendor to work with. All right, and with that, I'm going to stop and I'm going to hand the reins over to Miss Joy. Or am I doing Lee? Miss Lee, it's me. Your video is off. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen.
And we are going to talk today about the AISB condition management programs. Um, we have some existing programs and we have some really cool up and coming things and some changes to that program. So um, I wanted to make sure that everyone was updated on those changes and everyone knows of the existing programs. So we're gonna get started. So right now, the existing programs that we have are the Wonder Health program, our Pregnancy Resource Toolkit, our Tobacco Cessation Program, and our Current Diabetes Engagement Program. We have a great update because these programs have continued to grow. And as they grow, we wanna make sure that we are providing what you need from us as an employer. We wanna make sure that these programs are effective in helping you and that they truly are making an impact and worth your while. So for that, we have a update that we're providing with the diabetes program the current program has now been transferred over and we have partnered with a company called Oshner Digital Medicine and it is now a type two diabetes and hypertension program. So we have something for everyone and we're gonna talk about each on the upcoming slide. So first we're gonna go over our existing programs. Um, right here, we have Wonder Health. Wonder Health is a program that originally was called Naturally Slim. The company went through a rebranding process and we started in, uh, I believe, September of 2020. This was something, it is a completely digital program. It is done at your convenience. And this is a program, we don't like to call it a weight loss program. We like to think about the things that this program could help you do in terms of, okay, do you need more energy? Do you want stress reduction? Uh, do we wanna sleep better? We want to think about all the things that the foods that we eat, how they contribute to our health. And that's what this program is aimed around. It's going to show you things like, okay, am I eating because I'm stressed? Am I craving salty food because I'm dehydrated? Things of that nature. This is a program that is available to you as an AISD employee or dependent over the age of 18 at 100% no cost to you as long as you were on the AISD medical plan. What you'll do is you will go to the enrollment link that is on some of the flyers that go out and we've actually got it on the pages of our benefit guide. So if anyone is interested in that, you can go ahead and email me and we can share that with you. Um, but you'll go to the enrollment link, you'll sign up and then they will send you a welcome kit. Once you get your welcome kit, you'll be able to start your program. The program are um, aimed at health coaching and each, each week has a new video that you watch. And the nice thing about this is, again, you do this on your own time. So if you've had a really tough day at work or you're exhausted and you just can't sit down and watch your lesson that evening, it's always going to be available for you to sign in and watch the next day. We've had a lot of success and a lot of our employees really, really love this program. I believe the average weight lost in the first 13 weeks of the program through our participants has been reported at about 3.5 pounds. So We've got a lot of consistency and a lot of success. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can always reach out to me. And again, that's free to you if you are on the AISD medical plan. The next resource that we have is our pregnancy resource toolkit. This toolkit is not only for people who are trying to have a baby and get pregnant. This is for people who are thinking about the potential of sometime in the years forward is this something that I can afford? Is this something that I would like to do? How would that look? What resources does AISD provide me with? This is for people who are planning for adoption. This is for people who have had a baby and they have a newborn and it's a brand new time in their life and it's scary. So it also goes over after birth resources. Um, some of the before birth um, resources are prenatal care. We can show you how to find um, a, a position for yourself. We can show um, how to find physicians that are in network for your plan for mommy and baby. We can find pediatricians for you. We have screening checklists. One really cool resource included in this toolkit is our Satan prenatal planning web seminars. So a lot of our employees, the bulk of our employees are on a Satan only plan. So you will be delivering at a Satan hospital. If that's the case, you can sign up for these webinars. And in the webinar, they'll ask you, what hospital, what Satan hospital are you planning on delivering? And halfway through, they break you out into breakout rooms with your delivering nurses, and they're able to give you virtual tours of those units and of the birthing units where you'll be actually having your baby. So it's a really cool resource. And again, it's free and you don't have to leave your home if that's not something you're comfortable with. 
Um, the toolkit also goes over the leave process review in terms of what's available and it directs you where to go once it's time for you to submit your leave. It includes the leave documents that you'll need to submit. And it also gives our contact information. So if you have any questions about that, you can call and talk to some of our team. Um, it gives information on anticipating changes in benefits. There's a big difference between being an employee only on a medical plan and adding a family. So we want you to be able to anticipate those cost changes and to plan ahead. And that also includes the dependent care FSA accounts, planning for new baby expenses. This one is really, really big. I know we talked about it in the very beginning when I was going over this content, but choosing an in-network OB and pediatrician, that's something that's very important because having a baby can be very expensive. And we want to make sure that you're going to in-network doctors and that you're getting the best care based on your plan. Okay. The other really cool resource that's in here, we get a lot of questions about this, is for our nursing mothers obtaining a breast pump. As an Aetna medical plan member, you are available, you're, you are allowed to get one free standard electric breast pump once every 36 months. That's not one every baby, that's one every three years. So there's a document in there as to how to obtain those things through your insurance and make it as seamless and stress-free as possible. After birth, we talk about newborn screenings, what the doctors are going to essentially recommend you do because you know once the baby's born, there's things like vaccinations that they recommend you get, things of that nature. Um, we talk about, we have CompSign EAP resources. Um, Postnatal depression is a very, um, it's, it's a very real thing that a lot of women deal with. So we want to make sure that you know what resources are available to you in that aspect if it is something that you do end up anticipating. Um, the other thing that's really scary, when a baby is sick versus when we're sick as an adult, those things can be handled very differently. And it's very scary when you have a newborn and they're coughing or they have the fever and they can't tell you what hurts or what, you know, what's the problem. So we have a when to call the doctor infant edition that goes over things like what does vomiting mean? What does a cough of this nature mean? Things like that. And it gives nurse resources that you can go through and just handle those situations in the best way possible to alleviate your stress. Um, we talked about you know, what it is to add your child to the plan. We've got some resources and instructions on how to submit a life event once your baby's born. You have a time frame of 31 days to get that baby added to your plan. And a lot of people don't know that. So it's really important that we are educating and sometimes over-educating to make sure that everyone knows that that's the limit. That's how long you have to add your dependents. And then finally, we have our Austin ISG ch child care programs. There are different day daycare resources that are available. This is a working document and it's a website on the AISD site. And so we include that in the toolkit. That way you know where to go to find the most updated resources in regards to that Austin ISD child care. Um, our next program that we offer as an AISD plan member, um, medical plan member, is our tobacco cessation program. So these four medications here, we've got the nicotine TD patch, we've got the nicotine polyacrylic gum in the lozenge, and the bucoprion hydrochloride, the smoking deterrent, um, only when it's prescribed for smoking cessation. So these four medications are available to you free of charge as an AISD medical plan member. So if you're thinking of quitting smoking, if that's something that you're interested in or anticipating or planning for, you could take this list of medications to your physician and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to quit smoking or any of these an option for me, and you'll get them at a $0 copay. So um, this is an offering. We want to eliminate barriers to um, smoking cessation, and this is how we're able to do that. And then finally, we have our existing diabetes program. This diabetes program is for type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes and dependents. So this is a program that if our, med our members are submitting regular hemoglobin A1C visits to me, and they are visiting and doing health coaching sessions with me for our um, onboarding sessions. Those used to be done in person. Now they're being done via Zoom. But if you're satisfying those requirements, you get your diabetes medications at a $0 copay. So again, this is a program that started in July of 2019. So we knew that this was a program that was going to grow and we now have almost 400 members in this program. So in the nature of making sure that you guys are getting the best care possible, we partnered with Oshner Digital Medicine 
and Oshner is able to accommodate our type two diabetics and our um, diabetics over the age of 18 and our hypertensive patients. So through this, what we're able to do is we're able to offer not only the free medication, we're also able to offer test strips at a $0 copay as well. So those aren't even run through insurance anymore. Those come to you through Oshner. So this program has changed and this is Oshner. So what happens is when you are ready to enroll in Oshner, as long as, like I said, you have mobile access and you are type two diabetic, you will go to oshner.org backslash Austin ISD dash care and you'll enroll. We also have, as you see here, we have these flyers that are out. These are in the benefits guide. These are going to be sent to homes. We're doing email communication, things like that to make sure everyone knows, um, but you're able to enroll. And once you enroll, they're going to call you and you're gonna do an onboarding call with them. Like I said, this is something that is done um, digitally. And so what happens is you'll do your onboarding call and then they will say, okay, are you type two diabetic? Are you hypertensive or are you both? Because you can also do both at the same time. When that happens and once you're officially registered, they're gonna send you your glucose monitor from Oshner with the strips. And if you're hypertensive, they'll also send you a blood pressure monitor. You'll download the Oshner app and they'll walk you through everything step-by-step. Step. And once you start uploading your glucose into those devices or your blood pressure into those devices, it will automatically upload into the app. And then you'll have your physicians and your care team from Oshner calling you and doing these sessions and making sure that you're managing and they work with your doctor. So that's one thing that we're not physically able to do currently in the program. And this is why this is such an exciting time because we're really able to get you more access to care completely free. Once you're doing this, you are able to get your diabetes medications and your hypertension medications at a $0 copay. So this is a really exciting time for us because this is now a program that includes hypertension. So we're able to reach out to that group and we're also able to extend the not having to pay for test strips anymore because that was a big ask that we had in the program. We will still be offering the free medication to our type one diabetics and our dependents under the age of 18. And they'll just continue working with me in the, continu in, in the current program that we have. So we wanted to make sure that we were giving options to all of our employees, whether they had a mobile phone, whether they had accessibility, or if they don't wanna participate in Oshner, they can still continue working with me. It's completely up to your own volition, but this is our way of making sure that we recognize that this program is growing and we just wanna make sure we're giving you the best care and eliminating more and more barriers to managing your diabetes and your hypertension. So if Oshner is something that you are interested in, you can, like I said, enroll today. We've got Kayla, who is our account manager. Her number is listed. And we also have my information listed at the bottom. It will still be the point of contact and we'll be working very closely with their team. So any questions, like I said, you can reach out to me and we'll get you taken care of. Um, and again, if we have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, my phone number is 512-230-9071, or you can email me at nsl at etna.com. Feel free to reach out. No question is a silly question, and I really hope that we can get you enrolled in some of the programs. And so with that, I am going to pass the control over to Joy. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Joy Campbell. I am the EAP therapist that is assigned to AISD. And what that basically means is I work for CompSych, but I am the therapist that you can call directly instead of calling the 1-800 number, that kind of thing. I work with only staff. So anybody that's an employee can have four free confidential sessions with me, whether you have insurance or not. Uh, so this is provided to any one staff member insurance or not, free of charge. And uh, this happens via Zoom or phone typically. Uh, you will see me on site if I get called out for a crisis or a training, that kind of thing. But most of the time I will be available via phone or Zoom and that is secure video. Um, you can say what you want with me, you can be yourself. Um, nothing gets reported back to anyone, it's completely confidential. 
And these are individual sessions. Unfortunately, I can't work with family, family members, um, children, that kind of thing. So just the staff member. Um, and to get a hold of me, my number is 312-498-1676. Or you can email me at jcampbell at comsite.com. And then let me share my screen. We're going to be talking about balancing work and life today. Oops. Timed out pretty quick on me there. All right, so in thinking about balancing work and life, two of the questions we need to think about are which work family conflicts are the most difficult for us to manage and what are the greatest barriers to achieving this balance? So a couple of things that I can think of work family conflicts that come up pretty often are is if you have a sick child and you're trying to figure out, okay, who's going to take the child to the doctor because I need to be at work, whichever family member is doing this. Another one is I've had people say they miss a lot of sporting activities or plays or just time in general with family. So those are a couple of conflicts that I've talked about with people before. So the question on what are your greatest barriers to achieving balance? The number one barrier is burnout. Um, stress, fatigue, exhaustion, anxiety, depression, all of these are things that come up routinely when I'm talking to um, people about why they are having such a hard time achieving work and life balance. A lot of times people are not able to manage their self care very well. And this is where the halt comes in. And I teach this to everyone I talk to, or at least I, I try to. Um, if you are hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or triggered, that means self care needs to happen or we're not gonna be at our best. Um, we need to take time off if we can, sleep, take care of our physical and emotional health, whatever that means to regain some of that energy to be able to deal with you know, work-life balance. Another barrier to achieving balance would be um, poor communication skills on the fact of, or the part of maybe your team or yourself, or when I've run into this, it's I've been asked to do something, but it wasn't clear on how to do it. So I operated the way I thought it was supposed to be. And then that wasn't the way it was supposed to be. So that can create frustration, that kind of thing. Uh, having a negative attitude is pretty big and pretty difficult sometimes depending on what we're dealing with. So look for ways to be optimistic. Look for ways to just have a positive approach to what's going on. Focus on what you can do, not what you can't do. Um, try to problem solve as much as you can. If you have those around you that tend to be more negative, try to respond in a positive way. Hey, you know, we're in this together at least you know, we have each other, you know, something to kind of mitigate some of the negativity because it's really easy to get sucked into that. And that just, you know, creates more negativity for ourselves, makes it more difficult to balance. Um, another barrier can be self-doubt. Work on your confidence, trust yourself, you know, trust yourself to continue learning, progressing mistakes or learning opportunities. Um, it's, it's not the end of the world, but sometimes people focus too much on perfectionism. And it makes it really difficult to have balance. Another one, distractions. We get distracted pretty easily. When I'm trying to accomplish a task, I typically am going to put my phone on, do, do not disturb. I'm going to flip it over so I can't see it. Maybe put a sign up that says, you know, don't knock on my door. I've got, you know, just, you know, for an hour, just anything that you can minimize on distractions could help too. So just, you know, kind of figure out uh, what work family conflicts, conflicts are the most difficult for you to manage and what things you kind of need to do to identify what your barriers are. So the elements of balance, we have our home, career, and leisure. So, you know, the leisure can be time off that a lot of people say they don't take, uh, which I would encourage you to take if you can. Do the fun that recharges you. Is that alone time? Is that family time? Just what is it that kind of helps you achieve, um, you know, some regenerative feelings? Have a positive, optimistic attitude um, on your communication. Make sure you're clearly stating what you need, what your thoughts or feelings are in a healthy manner to, you know, to those people that it would be safe to do so. 
Um, set the boundaries with people that you need to set them with. A lot of us struggle with setting those boundaries, saying no to people. We tend to take on too much and that just makes it difficult to you know, keep that balance going. So three questions to find balance. Um, where are you currently? How close or far from balance are you? Um, where do you wanna be? What would balance look like for you? Um, how can you get there? What steps do you need to take to achieve balance? And then in, in looking at all of these, think about what is stopping you from achieving balance? What do you need to do to address it? Do you need to set boundaries? Do you need to make some changes? Do you need to work on your attitude? You know, what, what are things in your control? Because that's where we really need to focus is what we can do. Because if we focus too much on what we can't do, then we sometimes feel stuck, we feel frustrated, and you know, it, it just doesn't feel good. So let's look at effects of stress on our bodies. I mean, this is kind of all around. Um, I tend to hold stress in my shoulders. So if we look at the skeletal muscular system, we hold these, uh, the stress in our muscles, our back, our neck. Sometimes we go home with, you know, our neck is just so sore, our back hurts. So when you have some of these things happening, pay attention to them. Um, if you get an upset stomach, see what's going on. Maybe your anxiety is flaring up. Maybe, um, you know, your body's trying to tell you that you need to address something or do some self-care, take a break, walk away, something. Um, our blood pressure can go up. Uh, sometimes if we're super stressed, we seem to get sick more often. A lot of that can be we're just not taking care of ourselves. We're not allowing that time to take care of ourselves. So components of a balanced life, meaning you're focused on yourself, you're taking time for you. You're taking time to recharge. You're doing the things that you need to do to keep yourself as healthy as you can. In your relationships, you're taking time for your family, your friends in a, in a way that you know, helps you, not that takes away from you. And then figure out what your responsibilities are. You know, what are your priorities? Is there anything you can let go of? Is there anything you want to do more of? Do you want to change anything? So just continue to kind of you know, look at what you can do to make things better for yourself. So some of the things we can do is take time for fun. What kind of recreation do you like? Do you like exercise? Do you like team sports? You know, whatever recharges you that's fun. Uh, family time, maybe set a game or a movie night. So once a week, your family knows that they can look forward to that, as can you. Time alone. Typically, you want to leave the house if you have a full house, because time alone can be a lot more difficult if you have people that can, you know, constantly need something from you. So figure out what that time alone might be. Maybe you take your dog for a walk. Maybe you walk by yourself. Maybe you go do a yoga class. Just something that helps you kind of take care of you. Communicating. Be open about your needs, your thoughts, your feelings to safe people. And I say that many times because sometimes we communicate to those who aren't necessarily safe people for us, um, things that maybe may not be helpful. So those that are your support system that are there for you and that can help you, those are the ones you want to be communicating more openly with um, and see, you know, if they can support you. Building relationships, spend time with those you want to build your relationship, spend less time with those that you don't. Those that help you be your best self, those are probably the ones you want to build. So a quick case study, we're going to talk about Julie. She has been at her current job for a couple years, works 50 or more hours a week, rarely takes her lunch break, probably doesn't take regular breaks either. She gets two weeks of vacation every year, but she's only taken five days since she started. She's now taking Monday and Saturday classes to earn her master's degree. She's single, but has been dating somebody for about a year, although they only see each other a couple days a week because they're both busy. Every Tuesday night, she meets with her friends. She goes all the time because she feels guilty if she doesn't. Uh, she babysits for her sister and brother-in-law every Wednesday night. In the evening, she calls family, friends, kind of stay in touch. Weekends are so filled with household chores and errands because she doesn't have time during the week. So remember, balance is something you can achieve. Allow others to share the load. Let go of unrealistic expectations. Act upon your goals and priorities. No is a word you can learn to say. Communicate to strengthen relationships. Expect and plan for the unexpected. 
So keeping that in mind, let's go back and recap her real quick. One, she works 50 hours a week. She has 80 hours of vacation, has only taken 40 out of 730 days. She has only taking, taken five days. So think about that load, 730 days, only taking a break five days because she, Monday night, she has class. Tuesday night, dinner with friends. Wednesday, babysits. Thursday and Friday, doesn't have anything listed other than calling family and friends in the evening and possibly spending time with boyfriend Rob. Saturday morning class, masters. Chores, errands. Sunday, same thing. So basically, she has allowed herself no balance. I mean, I, there's nothing in there that is self-care. So maybe she needs to allow others to share some of this load. Maybe she needs to let go of some unrealistic expectations she may have on herself, act upon her goals and priorities. I'm not sure if she's even examined what her goals and priorities are. She definitely is not saying no, or at least doesn't appear from the case study that she's saying no. And I'm not sure how well she's communicating. I don't know on the plan for the unexpected that she has time to address anything unexpected. So this is a setup for burnout if she's not already burned out. So thank you everybody for being here. If you can, or if you, you know, want to kind of tailor some of this to your life and get my input and maybe some help, some support, that kind of thing, feel free to reach out. Um, otherwise, thank you much, very much for attending and back to Lee. Thank you, Joy, that was great. Um, and thank you all for attending. If you have any questions, you can reach each of us at the benefits team at AISD, um, or you can reach us via email, whatever's more convenient for you. But um, I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon and thank you so much for your time. Have a great one, guys.